Thanks for covering the bill. I went ahead and cancelled yours. <laughs> Staying in a luxury hotel on my wife's time? Life doesn't get better than this. <laughs> I hear my mother-in-law and husband chuckling loudly. By all means, have a great time. <laughs> Their laughter suddenly stops when I say this with a smile. You're weird. Don't you realize we tricked you? Wouldn't most people be upset? I haven't been tricked at all. You see, I haven't paid a cent for this trip. My name is Laura, a 32-year-old housewife. I met my husband James through work. He was a client, and we had worked together several times when he invited me to dinner. Since we were the same age, we quickly found common interest and hit it off. We started going out for meals and dates and before long, we began dating. Fast forward one year and we were married. We have now been married for two years. But that doesn't mean our married life has been a continuous honeymoon. At first, James was incredibly kind and always treated me with care. So I put a lot of effort into housework to make him happy. James wanted me to be a stay-at-home wife, so I quit my job and fulfilled that role. Every day, I prepared breakfast, made lunch, and cooked elaborate dinners. I also kept the house clean, doing the laundry and all sorts of chores diligently. Life is so comfortable with you around. You're really helping me out. James used to say that and appreciate my hard work. I was able to give my all each day because of that. However, as we reached the two-year mark, the spark we had as newlyweds seemed to fade. Lately, I've noticed James growing more indifferent. No matter what I do for him, he doesn't seem to react anymore. Tonight, I made your favorite fried chicken. Oh, uh, all right. Was work tough today? Yeah, I guess so. I filled a bathtub for you, so feel free to take a bath whenever. Oh, yeah, whatever. My husband seemed disheartened whenever I spoke to him, offering nothing more than half-hearted acknowledgments. He used to come home from work on time when we first got married. But he's been coming home later and later. He also started going out for drinks without telling me, which often resulted in wasted dinners I had prepared. Is this what they call the seven-year itch? I miss the good old days, when we were a loving couple. Was that too much to ask for? But there was another thing bothering me. It was the presence of my mother-in-law, Rose. Ever since we got married, she has never been fond of me, always finding a reason to complain. You are so plain. Can't you wear something more colorful? You probably can because your face is plain too. The food you cook is bland and not even tasty, just terrible. I seriously questioned her character, wondering why she was so mean. Whenever we visited my husband's parents, she would bully me and badmouth me endlessly. After two years of marriage, she started bugging us about having a grandchild. How can we start a family under such pressure? Yet. She relentlessly pushed me to have a child. My father-in-law did nothing about his wife's bullying. It's like he found it too troublesome to intervene. My husband also turned a blind eye, offering me no protection. I was devastated. I at least wanted my husband on my side. Feeling utterly lonely, I felt unwell one day and went to the doctor. You're pregnant. What? I was shocked, to say the least. I had no idea I was pregnant, but I was thrilled. Having a new family member on the way with my husband filled me with joy and hope for the future. I couldn't wait to share the news with my husband when he got home from work that day. Really? Even my usually indifferent husband was wide-eyed. He was overjoyed when I nodded. Yes, I'm going to be a dad. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> yeah. I was happy that my husband seemed interested in me again after a long time. Both my father-in-law and mother-in-law were also happy about the new grandchild. 
and they were exceptionally kind to me. Since my family lived far away, my mother-in-law frequently came over to help me during my pregnancy. My husband told me not to overexert myself and I felt as if the kind husband I knew had returned. However, this happiness was short-lived. The turning point came when I shared the baby's gender. When I told my in-laws that the baby would be a girl, my mother-in-law looked very disappointed. You can't even give birth to a boy, huh? With those harsh words, my mother-in-law made her opinion known. For a second, I wasn't quite sure what she had said, but apparently, she's old-fashioned and thinks it's crucial to have a boy. Once she learned the baby was a girl, she stopped all support during my pregnancy. That meant I had to handle everything on my own when I was feeling my worst. As for my husband, he didn't seem to care about the baby's gender, but he started complaining when I got sick and couldn't keep up with the housework. You didn't make dinner again and you've been lounging on the couch? I'm sorry. I'm not feeling well. Don't be such a baby. I have to go to work even when I'm sick. You're a housewife. Housework is your job. His lack of consideration for my condition hurt me deeply. The only hope I had was the baby inside me and the thought that we would meet soon. And then I safely gave birth to our daughter. Seeing her for the first time filled me with joy. My husband was also thrilled and emotional when he saw his newborn daughter. She is as cute as an angel. I thought the three of us could finally be a happy family. But when we got home from the hospital, he reverted to his cold distant self. While I do love my daughter, my husband would always leave her to me when she cried. He never bothered with things like changing diapers or giving her a bath. Even when the already busy task of parenting, he didn't consider that and would selfishly ask, What about dinner? Or, is the bath ready? Little by little, I started to lose trust in him. The thought of divorce crossed my mind, but our daughter had just been born and I couldn't go to work. So all I could do was wait until she grew up. The only silver lining was that I didn't have to visit my husband's parents because of the childcare. My mother-in-law wasn't interested in my daughter, so my husband didn't complain when I said I didn't want to go. Time flew by while I was focused on raising my daughter and before I knew it, she turned three. As she started talking, my husband became more interested in her. Though our relationship had cooled, I appreciated his effort as a father but something started to bother me. Over the past year, he had been acting strangely. He started caring more about his appearance. He used to just let his hair grow out until I told him to get a haircut. Lately, though, he's been going to the salon himself and getting stylish haircuts. He's also started wearing cologne and has been shopping for clothes like crazy. I wouldn't mind if he just took an interest in fashion, but he's always so restless. And he's been spending more time on his phone lately. Is he cheating on me? So I started watching him more closely. One day, while he was in the bathroom, his phone was left on the table and it dinged with a new message. I was shocked when I saw the message on the screen. It was from a woman named Jennifer saying, Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night accompanied by a lot of heart emojis. I thought he was supposed to be going out for drinks with his co-workers tomorrow. Was he lying and actually meeting up with this woman? Once you start suspecting, everything seems suspicious. I couldn't shake my unease, so I decided to hire a private investigator. Weeks later, the results confirmed my worst fears. He was indeed cheating. Apparently, it's a female colleague from work. No matter how strained our marriage has been, crossing that line is unforgivable. I started preparations for a divorce. I hired a lawyer and even began searching for a job to support my daughter after the divorce. Out of the blue, he proposed a family vacation. How about we take a trip for dad's 60th birthday? Sure. Have a great time. Don't be cold, you're coming too, right? What? I was shocked I never expected him to say something like that. 
What's the deal? You've acted like you're not interested in me. Likewise, you didn't seem interested in me either. That's turning 60. We should all celebrate together, so help me out here. I didn't really want to go, but when he mentioned the dates, I came up with a plan. Fine, we will leave our daughter with my sister. Thanks, also you can handle the hotel and flight bookings? What? I'm busy on weekdays, so I would like you to take care of it. Alright. Really appreciate it. Just put it on the credit card, I'll pay you back later. What? Apparently there are benefits if we pay by credit card. Well, alright. I was hesitant but came up with a plan for that too. He was delighted that I agreed to handle everything. But I was delighted for a different reason. It's time for revenge, for betraying me. About a month later, the day for father-in-law's 60th birthday trip arrived, I drove to the airport with my husband. There, we finally reunited with his dad and mom after a long time. A long time no see, Lara. It's been a while. You haven't changed a bit, still looking plain as ever. <laughs> and Rose, you're still carrying extra weight. <laughs> as I see that the expression on my husband's family goes stiff. What the heck? You can't just say that, how rude! You need to apologize to mom. Will Rose apologize? To me for calling me plain? Why would I apologize? I just stated the facts. So did I. Hey enough, don't insult mom. At this point, I had nothing to lose, so I wasn't hesitant to pick a fight with my mother-in-law. Oh, could it be that you're not overweight but actually pregnant? You look about the same size as when I was pregnant. My apologies for the mistake. What's wrong with you? We haven't seen each other in ages and this is how you talk to me? And you can't even have a son? I really could care less if you call me useless, but for the record, I'm not showing like you are, Rose. <laughs> I keep provoking her and my mother-in-law storms off saying, I can't stand to look at your face anymore. My husband says, Uh, cool it. Take some time to clear your head, and walks away with his parents. With a few hours to kill before the flight, they probably went to some cafe. I was relieved to have some time to myself, so I hung out at a coffee shop. Then my husband texts me. Come to the gate soon. When I arrive, I see my mother-in-law leaning on my father-in-law. What's going on? I ask my husband. She got dizzy from being so angry at you. He says, Could you get some motion sickness pills? She might get sick on the flight. Right now? Won't we miss the flight? We're fine. I'll watch your bags. Go get it. All right. I step away, suspicious. Understanding they were up to something, I moved just out of sight and then went upstairs to observe my husband and his parents from the second floor. Sure enough, my mother-in-law immediately moved away from my father-in-law and was cheerfully chatting and laughing with my husband. Faking it, huh? My husband and his parents then left my bags right there and headed for the gate. I quickly went back to collect my bags. Can't just leave them, they'll get stolen. A few minutes later, my husband called me. I answered the phone while watching them disappear through the gate. Where are you? We decided to go without you. <laughs> what? It's what you get for disrespecting mom. <laughs> My mother-in-law grabs the phone. Thanks for the payment, we cancelled only your ticket. <laughs> Staying in a fancy hotel with your money will be so sweet. <laughs> I heard my mother-in-law and husband burst into loud laughter. They probably never intended to bring me along in the first place. Well, I never planned on going either. Enjoy yourselves, alright? <laughs> when I said that with a smile, their laughter suddenly stopped. You're strange. Don't you realize we tricked you? Shouldn't you be upset? No tricks here. I didn't pay a dime for this trip. What? I heard my husband's voice probably because they had the call on speaker. What's going on? Explaining would be a hassle. So I'll tell you later. Bye. I said that and hung up the phone. Then I immediately left the airport and hit the road. I headed to the new rental condo I had secured. Boxes were already there and my sister and her husband were waiting for me. While I was at the airport with my in-laws, 
They had moved all my belongings for me. I was beyond grateful, especially since they also took care of my daughter. Once we started unpacking in the new place, we were done in no time. As a thank you, I took my sister and her husband to a steakhouse and we all enjoyed a nice meal. My husband kept calling, but I ignored it. The next day, he called again around noon, so I finally answered. Hey, were you lying yesterday? <laughs> I enjoyed a suit in your place. Sure, why wouldn't you? It's already paid for. What? What are you saying? I changed the account where my credit card payments get drawn from to our joint account and i moved all the money i put in there to my own account so what does that mean basically the trip was paid for with the money you put in that account what so i, I paid for it yes exactly you have got to be kidding how much did it cost plane tickets and all maybe around uh five thousand dollars for four adults why four? Only three of us went on the trip. Last minute cancellations don't get refunded, you know. My husband was speechless over the phone. Why would you do this? Do you hate me? It's not about hate, it's just a little payback for the man who cheated. W what? I have evidence of your affair, just so you know. He gasped in disbelief. Prepare yourself for a divorce, alimony, and child support. Y you can be serious. You brought this on yourself. From now on, we'll communicate through lawyers. I said that and hung up on him. After that, I hired a lawyer to handle various procedures. The divorce went through smoothly and I got compensation from my husband and his affair partner. I switched the credit card payment back to my account after the travel expenses were paid. Of course, I'm also demanding child support from my husband. It seems he couldn't cover the payments with his own earnings and savings. So he borrowed money from parents-in-law. Parents-in-law also apparently drained all their savings by covering their son's debt. Now, my husband has moved back in with his parents and they seem to be living a poor life together. Serves them right. I have no intention of letting my daughter meet her ex-father. And I haven't told him where we have moved. Marrying such a terrible man is regrettable, but I am grateful for the opportunity to have met my daughter. From now on, I plan to live happy days just with my daughter. I'm sorry for the unappealing meal my unattractive daughter-in-law has prepared. My mother-in-law scolded me in front of our relatives during my father-in-law's 60th birthday celebration. She's not only unattractive, but also inept. I'm truly ashamed. What a disaster. Where was my dependable husband, who always cared for me? Was he tending to our daughter? He was nowhere to be found. As soon as I arrived at my in-law's house, feeling fit as a fiddle, my mother-in-law suddenly complained of chronic back pain and became unable to move as the party preparation began. She delegated all the preparation work to me. Later, she continued to belittle me in front of our gathered relatives who were there to celebrate my father-in-law. She turned the once lively and cheerful mood into something resembling a wake. Then, my father-in-law stood up and broke the silence. Is that all you have to say? No one could have foreseen the series of unimaginable events that this single phrase would trigger. I'm Sarah, and I'm 35 years old. Six years ago, I married my husband, Michael, who was three years younger than me. We also have a five-year-old daughter. My mother-in-law seemed displeased with me since I was older than her son. Every time we visited her house during New Year's, Memorial Day, or national holidays, She'd make sarcastic remarks at me in my husband's absence. I wish I had a younger, vibrant, and cuter daughter-in-law, not a woman full of age spots like you. Do I really look that old? Yes, very! Don't you see your own face in the mirror every day? It does hurt to be criticized about your appearance, especially as a woman. But I thought it was better not to make a big deal of it since we had only met a few times a year. However... This seemed to irritate her even more and she began to use more harsh words. You're quite thick-skinned for an old woman. You don't get upset no matter what I say. I find it annoying that you don't show a shred of modesty. Uh, yeah. What should I say to my mother-in-law who only says things that make me feel at a loss for words? In front of my husband, she hides her true dark nature and speaks kind words to me. 
My husband seems to have no idea that I'm being mistreated by her. But if I were to accidentally vent my frustrations, I would likely be the one blamed, so I've always held back. Visiting the house with my mother-in-law present felt truly burdensome. However, it was a significant celebration for my kind father-in-law's 60th birthday. Many relatives were gathering, and we were having a grand event, so I decided to attend. My father-in-law is a quiet man who doesn't talk much, but he wraps me in his subtle kindness. When I'm feeling down because of my mother-in-law's nasty words, he gently approaches me and speaks to me. Sarah, if you're having a hard time, feel free to tell me. If it's alright, I'd like to be there for you. I wonder if my father-in-law realized that I was being harassed by my mother-in-law. But to protect me from further harassment behind the scenes, he consciously refrained from openly supporting me. To celebrate such a warm-hearted father-in-law, our family left early in the morning and drove three hours to our in-law's house. I was feeling a bit under the weather with the low-grade fever and lingering fatigue, so my husband, Michael, took it upon himself to do all the driving. On reaching my in-law's place, my mother-in-law stepped lightly out of the front door with a gleeful expression. Well, well, look who's here. It's been a while, Michael. You should show your face more often. Oh dear, you look tired. Well, I've been driving non-stop, so it can't be helped. I see. You've worked hard. I'll get the bed ready right away. Why don't you go rest in the back room? I think I'll take you up on that. Sarah, you should get a rest too. You've been taking care of the kid in the car. You must be tired. Besides, you don't seem well. Oh dear, Michael. You didn't know? I called Sarah yesterday and we planned to go shopping together for the 60th birthday celebration. You go and rest. Sarah... Once you've put the luggage at the entrance, we'll head out. Of course, no such communication had come and I don't remember making any such shopping promise. Having looked after our energetic 5-year-old daughter, I'm exhausted. And since I'm not feeling well, I'd like to rest too. Since Sarah's not feeling well, let her rest. The shopping can be done by you. But it's your father's big celebration. I want to choose the best ingredients with Sarah. Sarah, you'll keep your promise with me, right? She certainly knows how to make a good excuse. Without giving me a chance to refuse after setting down the luggage, she forcefully pulled me by the arm and shoved me back into the car we had just gotten out of. Then, glaring at me fiercely, she snapped. I don't think you need time to rest. However, right after that, she switched her expression to a big smile and loudly said, Thank you for driving the car. I'm so happy. Knowing my mother-in-law, if I opposed her now, it would surely make the whole day a disaster. I reluctantly got into the driver's seat. I'm fine, so Michael, you just rest. I'll go shopping with mother-in-law. As I tried to hand over our daughter to Michael, mother-in-law took my daughter from my arms and swiftly seated her in the child seat, quickly closing the door. Looking after the child is a mother's duty. Well, Michael, we're off. Once she got into the passenger seat, her sweet tone from before completely changed as she started berating me. So, you can't even look after your child properly? Stop using Michael for your convenience. You're just an incompetent daughter-in-law who's only aged. What was terrifying was that she maintained a sweet facade since Michael was still nearby. Oblivious to all this, Michael waved us goodbye. I drove my unfamiliar husband's car toward a large supermarket. Of course, there was no way mother-in-law would stay quiet during the drive, and she started lecturing me right away. I'll make you regret lazing around while making my son drive. Mother-in-law, please don't say such scary things. I've been feeling feverish and fatigued since this morning. Your poor health is due to your bad management. Also, your crow's feet have increased, and the spots on your cheeks have darkened. I can't even bear to look, and your skin has lost its elasticity. I had lost all my energy to respond to her harsh words, and barely managed to arrive at the supermarket, nodding along the way. This is really exhausting. I wonder how all the other daughter-in-laws in the world managed to endure such treatment from their mothers-in-law. My high-spirited mother-in-law, without even a word of thanks, jumped out of the car and swiftly handed me two shopping carts. You're so slow! Get a move on! When I tried to avoid the crowds, she swiftly moved forward, filling the shopping basket with luxury foods like USDA prime beef, crab, salmon roll, and melons. And then she started to add in things clearly not needed for the day. Mother-in-law, do we need these urgently? I asked. We're bulk buying, so we don't have to come to the supermarket again and again. You should know that without being told, she replied. Feeling helpless, I let her do as she pleased. By the time we finished shopping, the two baskets were piled high. 
We're going to check out. Hurry up. Stop dilly-dallying. Despite her rush, when it came time to pay at the counter, my mother-in-law showed no intention of taking out her wallet. Mother-in-law, the, the payment, I began, but with her hands folded behind her, she didn't move an inch. When I asked for the money again, she glared at me and got angry. You should pay for everything. E Excuse me? I stammered. As a wife, it's your duty to entertain your husband's father. Don't be stingy and just pay. I ended up having to pay a total of $300 at the cash register to avoid making a scene. Not having any cash on me, I paid with my credit card. As a part-time worker trying to raise a child, this was a significant blow to my finances. And to make matters worse, I had brought $300 as a birthday gift for my father-in-law's 60th birthday, but I couldn't use that. The expense meant I would have to cut back even more on our living costs in the future, and the burden that had already been heavy just became even heavier. I wonder how I should tell this to Michael. If I report this, mother-in-law might cause a fuss. During the car ride home, my mother-in-law kept hurling insults at me. It was almost impressive how many different insults she could come up with. By the time we arrived home, my husband was still asleep, probably due to exhaustion. Upon seeing this, my mother-in-law smiled slyly and began to take advantage of me. After you put away the groceries, go eat the garden right away. Please, can I rest a bit? You have no right to defy your mother-in-law. This is the consequence for making Michael drive alone. So this is what you meant by making me regret, I murmured. If you have time to move your mouth, just go and move your hands. Hurry up, we're short on time. After weeding, clean the bathroom and the toilet. Despite the unfairness of the situation, I had no choice but to endure it for the day. I weeded the garden and then cleaned the grimy, yellow-stained bathroom and toilet, thinking that once the 60th birthday celebration was over, I wouldn't have to see my mother-in-law for a while. My husband woke up just as I had finished cleaning and looked surprised to see me. Sarah, are you okay? If you're not feeling well, don't overwork yourself. Take a break now. Thank you. I'll take you up on that offer. Ouch! That hurts! Just as I was about to lie down, my mother-in-law suddenly let out a loud yell, clutching her back. Although she had been lively just moments before, she started complaining about sudden back pain. My mother-in-law, who always presents a gentle demeanor in front of my husband, suddenly let out a weak voice. This is troublesome. My back hurts so much, I can't do anything. My chronic back pain has flared up again. I, I won't be able to cook before the relatives gather. Sarah... You're my only hope, but oh, what should I do? As much as her sorrowful demeanor seemed to be staged, if her chronic back pain was genuine, then it would indeed be impossible for her to stand in the kitchen. Reluctantly, I pushed my weary body, asked my husband to look after our daughter, and started cooking. Sarah, are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I always cook, remember? To my husband, I put up a brave front, but my body was already fatigued. Yet, it was an important day for my father-in-law. I felt that I couldn't afford to take a break. My head is spinning, and somehow the smell of food is making me sick. But I have to keep going for my father-in-law. After I managed to finish cooking, my father-in-law came into the kitchen to check on me. You've worked hard. Thank you for preparing all this food. Not at all. It's for you. Please enjoy it later. After that, the relatives started gathering one after another. Everyone wished my father-in-law well, creating a lively atmosphere. As we finished the toast and were about to start eating, my mother-in-law started saying something shocking. I'm sorry, everyone, but due to my chronic back pain flaring up on this important birthday celebration, the food was all cooked by my daughter-in-law. I apologize for the unappetizing food made by my unattractive daughter-in-law. Both my father-in-law and husband froze at my mother-in-law's sudden outburst. My daughter-in-law is not only unattractive, but she's also clumsy. A total failure. It's truly pitiful. Ouch! My mother-in-law exaggeratedly rubbed her back, continuing to disparage me. She's so clumsy that without my support, she can't do anything. I wonder if she can even take care of her own child. I I'm so worried about whether Michael can manage with such a woman as his wife. What was supposed to be a festive atmosphere quickly turned gloomy, resembling more of a wake than a celebration. My usually supportive husband, who was supposed to be looking after our daughter, was nowhere to be found. At that moment, my father-in-law, who had been sitting quietly, suddenly stood up. Is that all you wanted to say? Huh? Seems like it. Maybe. We should kick out the useless one then. Following his words, 
My husband entered the room, holding our daughter in a suitcase. His face was unusually stern. Dad, as you said, I've packed her stuff. My mother-in-law smiled at the sight, seemingly pleased. Sarah, looks like you're getting kicked out. Hehehe. <laughs> but to her surprise, my husband handed the suitcase to her. What? My father-in-law's booming voice added the final blow. Take that and get out of this house right away. Although she seemed unable to comprehend what was happening, my mother-in-law quickly understood the situation. Why should I be the one kicked out? It's Sarah who's useless. The bathroom is always covered in mold. The toilet left dirty. And you call Sarah useless when you barely cook anything? Not to mention how harshly you've been treating her. I've had enough. It's the mother-in-law's duty to discipline the daughter-in-law. I was only pointing out her shortcomings. Discipline? What era do you think we're living in? Realizing that an angry father-in-law, eyebrows raised, wouldn't take her side, mother-in-law turned to her usual theatrics and began crying to my husband. <laughs> Michael, don't misunderstand. <laughs> we might need to take care of your father someday, right? <laughs> so, I was teaching Sarah how to be a good wife. <laughs> as tough as that was. Take care of him? That's a laugh. I won't be fooled by you anymore. You've just been bullying Sarah. Even today, despite feeling unwell, she came along to celebrate Dad's 60th birthday. Sarah volunteered to celebrate, didn't she? Don't lie. You also made her pay for the groceries, didn't you? I found a receipt from today in her bag when she was trying to take out candies for our daughter. It shows that Sarah paid with her credit card. Th that's... I just asked her to pay because I didn't have any cash on hand. I was planning to pay her back, honestly. Really? If I hadn't noticed, you would have just kept quiet. I've turned a blind eye to the common mother-in-law and daughter-in-law issues, but you're going too far. I'm fed up with living with a spiteful old woman. Seeing my husband and father-in-law turn away from her, mother-in-law began to blame me with all her usual acting prowess, tears streaming down her face. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sarah has been making false accusations about me. <laughs> That's terrible. You're all making me the villain. No, I haven't said anything. But it's a fact that you've been bullying me, isn't it? For the sake of father-in-law and my husband, who had gone to great lengths for me, I gathered the courage and spoke the truth for the first time. I would no longer let mother-in-law have her way. That's right. We heard about it from Mia. We also know about the nasty comments you made about Sarah at the supermarket and in the car. Afterwards, you made Sarah do all the weeding and cleaning the bathroom and the toilet. Yeah, Grandma was mean to Mommy. She made her clean a lot of places. You can't trust what a child says. Mia doesn't lie. Let's check the dash cam footage. That should clear everything up. Michael, could you do that? Good idea, Sarah. I'll do that right away. What? What is that? Ignoring his mother's question, Michael went to the car parked outside, started the engine, and began playing the dash cam footage. The latest device, which can also record the inside of the car, was installed, so even facial expressions were clear. Ah, oh, it's showing. She was saying these things. I'm shocked. Everyone, come over here and watch this. Relatives who had followed to see what was happening all checked the footage. Upon viewing, they began to comment. This is terrible indeed. Wow, this is the worst. Mother-in-law, who had stayed in the house insisting she wasn't at fault, began to panic as the atmosphere grew tense and ran barefoot toward the car. Everyone was taken aback by her swift movements, despite her supposed back pain. So, the back pain was just an act then. Hmm, I'm all better now. After casually responding to my words, she tried to awkwardly seat herself in the driver's seat to turn off the dash cam. But she was firmly held by my father-in-law, making it impossible for her to move. Stop! Stop this right now! Don't look at them! But it was too late. No amount of yelling could help her. With all her misdeeds exposed, my mother-in-law, stunned and speechless, sank down helplessly. That's when my father-in-law casually handed her a single piece of paper. I filled in my part. You just need to write your part and submit it. What? Isn't this a divorce form? I had it prepared just in case. I never thought I'd have to use it. Don't ever cross my doorstep again. Wait a minute. I promise to stop processing Sarah. Please forgive me. The sight of my mother-in-law begging for forgiveness with tears in her eyes was truly pitiful. But this too was likely an act. I firmly pushed my mother-in-law away. You let the cat out of the bag about bullying your daughter-in-law at the end. I will never forgive you. You might want to leave before the neighbors gather around. Oh no, this is terrible. The commotion attracted the attention of neighbors who watched from a distance. 
Perhaps not wanting to make a scene, she promptly took the divorce form and suitcase and her supposed back pain was nowhere to be found. She rushed out of the garden. The villain had been dealt with, but I returned home filled with guilt. I'm sorry for all this during your 60th birthday celebration, Dad. When I earnestly apologized, he responded, Sarah, you did nothing wrong. I'm sorry for all the trouble we've caused. Let's start over. My father-in-law smiled. The relatives also watched with kind expressions. Later, they praised the dishes I had prepared and ate heartily. At that moment, all the fatigue seemed to fly away. Thus, we celebrated my father-in-law's 60th birthday in a grand manner. My mother-in-law, who was initially reluctant to agree to the divorce, eventually agreed, and they divorced amicably. It was also revealed that she had been misappropriating funds from my father-in-law's account, and she was ordered to repay $10,000 that she had spent recklessly. Unable to find work due to her lack of experience, she now works as a janitor in an office building late at night. With barely any money left, she lives in a rundown apartment that's seen better days. On the other hand, I found out that I was pregnant with my second child. It seemed that the feeling of discomfort I had earlier was due to my pregnancy. Five months have passed since then, and my husband Michael has been very caring. The ultrasound revealed that we're expecting a boy. Both Michael and my father-in-law are looking forward to his arrival. Already excited, my father-in-law sent over blue baby clothes. My adorable daughter is overjoyed at the thought of having a younger brother, and practices taking care of a baby with her dolls every day. Watching her gives me immense happiness. My name is Myra. I reconnected with Corey, my current partner, at a high school reunion. Back in high school, we just knew each other's names and faces. But we hit it off at the reunion after sitting next to each other and started dating soon after. Corey proposed to me recently, so we are getting married. I had met my future in-laws father-in-law and mother-in-law a few times since Corey and I started dating. The only person I hadn't met was Corey's sister, Kristen. While father-in-law and mother-in-law always welcomed me warmly, Kristen would never come out of her room, and it's been bothering me. What does Kristen think of me? Don't worry about her. She's just shy. On the day of the family meeting, Corey tried to calm my nerves by saying that Kristen was just shy. I felt relieved hearing Corey's words. But we soon discovered that the assumption she's just shy was a major mistake. We're so happy that you're going to be Corey's wife. Corey, you've really stepped up. Make sure you make Myra happy. I will. Both father-in-law and mother-in-law were thrilled when we told them we're getting married. Just need to tell Kristen too, mother-in-law said, leaving her seat. As Corey, father-in-law, and I were chatting, a loud voice came from Kristen's room. What? Startled, we heard the sound of a door slamming. Kristen stormed into the room and glared at me. I will never accept this marriage! As I stood there shocked, mother-in-law followed Kristen, saying, Hold on, Kristen! But Kristen didn't stop. Marriage is disgusting! Just the thought of having strangers in the house is bad enough, but getting married? Seriously, no way! That's just gross! Kristen! Father-in-law raised his voice in anger, but Kristen ignored him, scanning me from head to toe. Then, crossing her arms, she snorted. Corey's taste in women is just awful! Why on earth would he marry someone as unattractive as you? Just thinking about what the kids would look like sends shivers down my spine. Can Corey even handle raising a child like this? Of course he can. What are you even saying, sis? Anyway, I'm against this marriage. I don't want her in our family. Don't you dare show your face here ever again. 
at Kristen's outburst, Corey and his parents scramble in panic. Stop it! They all try to silence Kristen, their voices seeming to echo from far away. Gathering myself, I stood up and said something I never thought I would say. Fine. I won't ever come back to this house. Myra, I'm sorry for my sister. I want to marry you. Yeah, I still want to marry Corey. We will get married. But I will never come to this house again. And I will never see Kristen for the rest of my life. This discussion is over. I said I don't want you to get married! Ignoring Kristen's yelling, I started to prepare to leave. As I was leaving, I looked at Kristen and said, I don't need your approval for the marriage. Corey's parents' blessing is more than enough, rest assured. Since we'll never meet again, there won't be any awkward family get-togethers. No matter how much you object, I won't give up marrying Corey. Goodbye. I'll never forget what you've said to me. Keeping a straight face, I bid my goodbyes to my shocked in-laws and left. I hurried home, with Corey frantically following behind, apologizing with a near teary face. Truth be told, I was really hurt by Kristen's words. Once we were out of sight of his parents and Kristen, tears started to flow as Corey apologized to me. It's really sad that your sister won't accept our marriage and that I can never return to that house. But I still want to marry you, Corey. I'm sorry I'm not the woman Kristen thinks I should be. Holding back tears and with a trembling voice, I got hugged by Corey, who told me, You've done nothing wrong, Myra. Feeling his warmth, I reaffirmed my commitment to marrying Corey. As I had declared, Corey and I got married and started our life together. We had a wedding, and both of us agreed not to invite Kristen. Corey's parents repeatedly apologized for Kristen's behavior, but our relationship with them remained good. Blessed by the family, except Kristen, Corey and I started our married life. However, Kristen was furious when she found out we got married. She yelled at Corey over the phone on our wedding night. Why did you marry such an awful woman? This is the worst! Corey eventually just put his phone aside. Fed up with the noise, he finally said, Just leave us alone! in a tired voice as he hung up. Since then, our marriage has been problem-free. Since I had declared that I wouldn't visit my in-laws, I haven't been to their place since that day. Instead, my in-laws, concerned about our lives, have been visiting us occasionally. Whenever they visited, they apologized for Kristen's behavior, to which I would reply, It's okay, I'm happy I married Corey. Looking back, I think it's a good thing we've cut ties with Kristen, who is quite a handful. If we hadn't, I shudder to think we'd still be hearing complaints from her. Then, just a few months into our marriage, I became pregnant. Corey was ecstatic. Even before we knew the baby's gender, he'd already started buying baby clothes and reading fatherhood books. I was feeling really happy. Then one day, I received a call from an unknown number. Though skeptical, I thought it might be from the maternity clinic or the local government office, so I answered. And I heard a voice I didn't want to hear. Myra? Long time no see. It's your sister-in-law, Kristen. Why is Kristen calling me now? 
especially after she so adamantly rejected me becoming part of the family. Confused, I muttered, Why? And Kristen filled me in. I found your number in Mom's phone, Kristen informed me. Corey has blocked me, so I thought I'd tell you. Tell me what? Speaking in a much gentler tone than I remember, Kristen dropped a bombshell. I'm getting married to Ronald, a classmate of you and Corey. Ronald was indeed our high school classmate. According to Kristen, they started dating through a work connection, which happened to be Ronald. Both Kristen and Ronald work locally, so it's not surprising they'd cross paths. But I couldn't hide my shock that Kristen, who had been so against marriage, was now planning to tie the knot. You're getting married? You, Kristen? Yes! Why the surprise tone? It's rude. Ronald will be at the next family meeting, so you both should come. It'll be weird if you weren't there. Um, okay. Had Kristen forgotten everything she had said and done? She had yelled at me, humiliated Corey and her parents, and never once apologized. I felt the back of my head heat up with anger. We'll be looking forward to it, I said, keeping my cool. Just so you know, don't mess this up. If you ruin my marriage with Ronald, you won't get away with it. After being told off by Kristen, I stood in front of the calendar. I circled the date Ronald told us he'd be coming for a family meeting at my in-laws. I waited for that day with bated breath. Days passed, and finally, the day Ronald was set to visit arrived. Corey and I dressed up nicely and left our house to greet him. When we reached the front of my in-laws' property, it seemed Ronald had just arrived. Seeing Ronald and Kristen waving at us from their car, Corey and I smiled back. It's been a while since the wedding. Myra and Corey, how have you been? We've been good, Ronald. Myra is expecting, actually. Really? Congratulations. Ronald greeted me with his familiar, warm smile from high school. He leaned in towards the baby bump and said, Can't wait for you to join us, little one. Thank you, I replied. Standing next to Ronald, Kristen walks onto the property of her in-laws and gently says, Let's go. No, I responded with a smile. I'm not allowed inside the house anymore. So, Ronald, I'm sorry, but I'll have to consider this family meeting over. Huh? Kristen's face flushed with rage while Ronald looked puzzled. Realizing Ronald was clueless, I decided to clarify. When Corey and I came to introduce ourselves as a couple, Kristen opposed us. She said that we were not welcome, that our union was disgusting, and that we should never come back. We married despite her, and that's why she didn't come to our wedding. What? Kristen told me she was sick during the wedding. That's uh, not true. Myra, what are you talking about? Stop lying. Trying to suppress her anger, Kristen spouts lies. I can't help but chuckle. I mean, come on, Kristen. You've got amnesia or something? You've made fun of me countless times. You even told me to my face that I'm ugly. You said that the baby I'm expecting will have my face. And you questioned if Corey could raise such a child. Forgotten all that? Uh, Ronald, everything Myra is saying is a complete lie. What are you talking about, Myra? Stop saying stupid stuff. 
Kristen. Just so you don't forget, let me remind you, I will never enter this house and I will never forget what you've said to me. Kristen looks at me with cold eyes and forcibly grabs my hand. Enough of this nonsense! Even Ronald is losing patience! Let's get inside! Corey and Ronald release my hand from Kristen's forceful grip. R Ronald? Kristen falls flat on her butt, looking dazed. Her pretty dress is now soiled with dirt. Ronald doesn't offer her a hand and just looks down at her. Is what Myra is saying true? It's a lie, all lies. Myra has a problem with making stuff up, right, Corey? Kristen almost threatens with her tone, but Corey sighs. Sis, you're embarrassing yourself. What Myra is saying is true. If you're thinking of marrying Ronald, you better acknowledge this aspect of yourself. Upon hearing Corey's words, Ronald pauses for a moment and then starts walking towards the car. Wait, wait! Ronald! Kristen chases after Ronald in her dirt-covered dress, but he won't let her into the car. I may be overstepping by intervening in my brother's marriage, but I can't consider marrying someone who insults not just me, but even a child who isn't yet born. No offense to the family, but I'll be going home today. We'll talk some other time. Don't say that! Please, Ronald! Corey, Myra, thanks for letting me know about Kristen before we got married. Ronald thanked us and drove away. Wait up! Kristen chased after the car, crying. Along the way, she stumbled and fell, continuing to cry. You'd think her own brother, Corey, would go to help. But instead, he takes my hand. Let's go. I can't let someone who yanks a pregnant woman's hand around be in the same space as Myra. As we walk back home, Kristen's cries linger for a while. After we get home, Corey contacts his parents-in-law. After being told to say our greetings, we stood at the front of the property and spilled the beans about the past. This led Corey to explain that Kristen and Ronald's engagement had probably fallen apart. My in-laws responded by saying, It couldn't be helped. When they visited us later, I apologized for what I had done to Kristen, even if it was out of revenge. They told me, Don't worry, what she did was true. According to my in-laws, Kristen had been shutting herself in her room ever since the engagement broke off. Ronald has a stable government job. And Kristen, who had thought she'd be living a stable life too, quit her job early on and is now unemployed. I heard she sneaks into the kitchen late at night to grab a meal as if she's stealing it, then goes back to her room avoiding any contact with her parents. But Kristen is unpredictable. Both Corey and I have blocked Kristen's phone number. We moved to a bigger house since we have a baby on the way and specifically asked my in-laws not to share our new address with Kristen. It seems like our decision was the right one. After we moved... Kristen went to our old place and began to bang and kick the front door, shouting, Open up! Because of her loud ruckus, a neighbor ended up reporting her to the police. It seemed like the in-laws were at their wit's end, dealing with Kristen. And after she caused some legal trouble, they kicked her out of their home. Regretting that they had spoiled Kristen, they gave her enough money to live on her own for a while. 
Since then, I've heard Kristen has been making ends meet in a small apartment with a part-time job. As for Corey and me, we welcomed a healthy, beautiful baby into the world. Just like Kristen said, our baby did look like me, and it was a very adorable little girl. Looking back at when Kristen opposed our marriage, I'm convinced that my unwavering decision to marry was the right one. Thanks to the courage I had back then to stand up to Kristen, I am now enjoying a happy life with a loving husband and a cute daughter. You're getting married? It all started one day at our usual dinner table. My oldest son, Brad, started off by saying he had something to tell me. My name is Mary. I'm 51 and I work part-time. I still feel young mentally, but there's nothing I can do about physically getting old. But my sons, who have grown up to cover for my declining energy, are my pride and joy. Brad, my eldest of three sons, has decided to get married. I knew he had a girlfriend, but it's finally happening. So Brad is getting married, huh? That means you're getting old, honey. Well, I guess no beer for you tonight, then. Just kidding. I ignored my husband's stupid joke and looked at my son's face. The other two are away in college, so the only one living at home is Brad, who's now working. He's matured a lot in his third year of work. Since deciding to get married, he seems even more manly and dependable than ever before. Tonight, we will toast in celebration. After my husband tearfully apologizes to me, saying, I'm sorry, you're forever young and beautiful. I granted him a single bottle of beer. According to my son, they are at the stage of discussing things like checking out wedding venues and deciding on a ring. The actual date is still up in the air. First, he said he wanted to bring his fiancé over to meet us. Marriage is a significant milestone in life, after all. I want them to have a wonderful ceremony. I know the stars of the show are my son and his wife-to-be, but I'm feeling a bit excited. Maybe I'll even get a new dress. My husband is going on about how beautiful I was in my bridal gown. Maybe I'll treat him to some more snacks. Then, the weekend came. My son's future wife arrived. Hello, I'm Alice. I was surprised at the casual greeting, but I guess that's just how young people are these days. Alice was a part-time employee at my son's favorite cafe. She was smitten with my son, and after a determined pursuit, they started dating. As the conversations came to a pause, my husband turned to me and said, Ah, oh, yes. I nod back at him. We have something important to tell you, Alice. The three of us, my husband, myself, and our son, had discussed this and decided to tell her. The truth is, Brad isn't our biological son. Alice's eyes widened in surprise at these words. It must be a shock. He's my nephew. Brad is my brother and his wife's only child. But they passed away in an accident when he was very young, so we adopted him. But he's like a son to us. We consider him our eldest. Please, take good care of our son. As my husband and I smiled, she fell silent. Perhaps she was struggling to respond. Well, let's leave the heavy stuff there. So, what and what kind of ceremony are you thinking? My husband ended the somber topic with a cheerful smile and switched to a brighter topic. Hmm, I would like to wear a traditional white wedding dress if possible. As she said this, she looked at my son's face. My son smiled brightly and nodded. Oh, that sounds wonderful. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event, so it needs to be perfect for the bride. I said, at which point Alice pulled a strange face. For a moment, I thought she was glaring at me. Was it my imagination? Before I could ponder further, her face had already returned to its usual expression. And what about you, Brad? What kind of wedding do you want? Um, well, I... No, no, we don't need your opinion. Alice immediately responded when my husband tried to engage our son in the wedding talk. What? 
the three of us were surprised and looked at Alice, who seemed puzzled by our reactions, as if she couldn't comprehend what was wrong with her statement. But you said it yourself, didn't you, Auntie, that it needs to be perfect for the bride? The groom is just a bonus. I'll have it my way. Her radiant smile left Brad speechless, and I was taken aback by her calling me Auntie. But surely Brad's wishes should be considered too. No worries. Leave everything to me, and it'll be the best wedding ever. Just make sure you work hard and contribute the funds, Brad. Her unstoppable energy and audacity left us all speechless. What a remarkable girl. And all I could do was nod in agreement. A few days later, we had a meeting with both families at a nice restaurant. This time, my husband's mother was present too. She wasn't able to join us last time because she was at an adult daycare center. She was excited to meet her grandson's fiancé, and despite using a cane, she was quite energetic. Sorry for the delay, traffic was a nightmare. Alice talked in a really casual way even though we had only met once. I noticed her parents in the background. They both shyly waved and quickly took their seats. The atmosphere was somewhat awkward. Without much conversation, we all quietly ate our meals. It was the moment I drew a breath to make some small talk. Alice suddenly spoke up. Granny, do you have trouble walking? That's right, dear. Old age has taken a toll on my legs. I absolutely refuse to care for you. Alice declared out of the blue, causing a moment of stunned silence. Someone went, huh? It was probably my mother-in-law, but it could also have been me. I want to make it clear I have no intention of caring for any of you. Auntie, you're not my mother, right? That makes you a stranger. And while uncle might be related, he's not my father. I won't look after any of you. Hey, Alice. Brad attempted to rein her in, but she wouldn't stop. And I definitely won't be calling you dad or mom, so remember that. I glanced at Alice's parents, taken aback to see them both nodding in agreement. Well, it's true that Brad isn't our biological son, but we raised him like one. Hush, uncle. Okay, I'm sorry. My husband fell silent after being sharply rebuked by her. Pathetic. It was at that moment, the sound of a fork being gently placed down resonated. Is that so? A calm, single statement. I carefully glanced at my mother-in-law. She seemed composed, but you could tell she was furious. They may not be their biological parents indeed, but they've raised them with more love than real parents would have. That's not something outsiders should meddle with. I don't care what you say. I'm not doing caregiving. It infuriated me, but I held my tongue as my mother-in-law continued to speak. I'm not expecting anyone to take care of me. I know I'm old, but I don't want to burden my daughter-in-law, so I use the facilities mostly every day. Oh, really? And? I've already transferred my assets to the couple as gifts while I'm still alive. They can use that money to go to the facilities or do whatever they want, so you won't have to lift a finger. Well, isn't that nice? She responds to my mother-in-law with irritated replies. Even when her son tried to chide her, it was like water off a duck's back. This discussion ends here. It's time to go home. With a single statement from my mother-in-law, the meeting came to an end. Women have become stronger these days. Perhaps that's the way of the world now. The rest of us, born in the 60s, were left with mixed feelings as we returned home. A few days later, my husband and Brad were at work. My mother-in-law was at the adult home and I was alone at home with a day off from my part-time job. The phone rang at that moment. Oh, hey there, Auntie. To my surprise, it was Alice on the line. Hey, um, Auntie, can you not show up at the wedding? What? I let out a surprised cry at her unexpected request. You're not Brad's real parent. You're technically his aunt, but you don't have any blood relations. So, you're essentially a stranger. Strangers don't come to weddings. But what about Brad? He doesn't matter. I told you, I'm doing the wedding my way. At the ceremony, I'll be preparing a letter to his deceased parents. That'll surely move everyone. That's not how it works. 
Brad's biological parents were indeed important to him, but he wanted us, his parents, to be at the ceremony. He told us that he thinks of us as his real parents, which brought tears to our eyes before. If you really want to attend, you'll have to be super generous with your gift. You received an inheritance from your mom, right? So, $10,000 is the bare minimum. If that's the case, I might let you sit in the far corner of the relative seats. How could you say such a thing? If you don't like it, fine. Don't come to the wedding. Oh, but you still have to give a gift. Wire transfer or registered mail is fine. Bye. She hung up the phone as if she had said everything she needed to say. It was like a whirlwind of a phone call. That night... Brad was going to be late due to overtime, and my husband was out for drinks. It was just me and my mother-in-law at home. A quiet strategy meeting time. Alice seems to dislike me. That's a problem. My mother-in-law sighed at my words. Let's make her like us, then. Simple and clear. If we're disliked, we'll make ourselves liked. And so my mother-in-law and I stayed up late into the night, hatching various plans. The sight of us grinning in satisfaction, saying, Perfect, let's do this. Made my husband, who had just come home, dumbfounded. But that's another story. Here to collect some cash. The next day at lunch, when I called Alice and told her we had something to give her, she came right away. Does she think every gift is cash? Shaking my head, I pulled out something. What's this? It's a cupcake I made, said my mother-in-law with a smile. I heard that you don't have grandparents. Try some of this. It's a super traditional one. I don't want it. Don't be shy. Here you go. No, I'm good. <laughs> After a back and forth between Alice and my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law shoved the treat into Alice's mouth. My mother-in-law's assertiveness is definitely her strength. Whoa, that's gross. Why is this so salty? Alice shouted, quickly gulping down the iced tea we served. Salty? That's odd. It shouldn't be. Perhaps you confused the sugar with salt. I also took a bite and grimaced. We had left everything to my mother-in-law, apart from the preparations and cleanup. But who could have predicted such a basic blunder? The cupcake plan had failed. But that's all right. Let's move on to the next plan. I have a gift for you. Wedding money? A gift card? Nope. What I handed her was a slightly larger paper bag. Looking at it, it was clear it didn't contain money, causing a frown to crease Alice's forehead. What's this? It's a dress. I hope you like it. It's gross. This isn't my taste at all. I would rather have money. Money! When she's this blunt about wanting money, it makes you not want to give it to her. I seriously thought about the dress that looked good in her. Not having a daughter, I'm not really familiar with the fashion trends for young women these days. I had consulted with the store clerk, but it seemed like it wasn't successful. It's a real blow. And another failed plan. It feels like we didn't get closer, but rather, things got even worse. That's enough. I don't want anything else. Just give me the cash. A cash gift is what represents the spirit of celebration. Don't you want to celebrate your son? Of course I do. Then I'll give it to my son. The wife should manage the husband's money. That's only natural. Just hurry up and hand it over, old woman. So this is her true nature, I thought, feeling saddened. Is my son really going to marry her? Who are you calling an old woman? I'm still spry. You're an old woman just by saying spry. Actually, you're a granny. Alice was saying whatever she wanted. As I wondered what to do, I was suddenly surprised by a voice saying, I'm home. Brad, wait, what happened at work? Alice started to panic. She was probably worried about being overheard. We went bankrupt. Huh? Did your father do something? Alice's misunderstanding echoed throughout the room, followed only by silence. Bankrupt. The company. It's gone under. Bankrupt? Gone under what? It wasn't just Alice that was surprised. My mother-in-law and I were both taken aback. 
Alice grabbed my son's slumped shoulders and started shaking him. What does bankrupt mean? Jobless? Penniless? What are we going to do about the wedding? I'm sorry, it'll have to wait. Releasing her grip from my son who answered listlessly, Alice stood dumbfounded. And then she cried out. Then how am I supposed to pay the damages? Now it was my mother-in-law and I who were taken aback at these words. My son being jobless was one thing, but I couldn't keep up with what was happening anymore. Damages? Ah, oh, never mind. Just give me the gift money quickly. Seems she no longer cared if my son was present. She held out her hand to me. My mother-in-law addressed her. Alice, could you give us an explanation? Shut up. Just give me the money. Alice. Shut up. It's you who needs to shut up, young lady. Explain yourself. Was this my mother-in-law's true colors? Her tone had suddenly changed from calm to harsh, and Alice was taken aback. And so, under the gaze of the snake-like mother-in-law duo, Alice started to speak in a weak voice. Apparently, Alice had been having an affair with her boss at her part-time job. Moreover, the guy was married. His wife found out and is demanding damages. But she had no money. So she thought about marrying my son. She had calculated that if they married, she would receive a hefty amount in gift money and plan to have my son pay for all the wedding costs while she would keep all the gift money. My mother-in-law and I were speechless. Of course, we were angry that she had used my son. But we were also astounded by how she didn't think she had done anything wrong throughout the entire conversation. I've already ended it with my boss. Once I pay the damages, it'll be over. That's why I'm going to continue with the marriage. Give me the gift money. It's a good thing the truth came out before the wedding, but I didn't know what to say to her. As I was worrying, I heard a low, muffled voice. Don't make decisions on your own. Looking up, I saw my son Brad glaring at Alice. His face was full of rage. You had an affair and yet you think you can make all the decisions? Alice probably never thought she would be shouted at. Brad is usually so calm. He's probably never raised his voice at her. Alice gave a small start. So what if it's over? You're not even trying to pay the damages yourself. You were trying to use our marriage to your advantage. You haven't shown any remorse. Do you really love me? I of course I love you. That's why I want to get married. Then pay the damages yourself. Show some sincerity. But, but... Alice tried to cling to my son, but he coldly pushed her away. Either way, we can't get married until I find a new job. Can you wait until then? She was at a loss for words. If she truly loved him, she would be able to wait. She would say she would support him. But those words didn't come from her. What's enough is enough? Out came her words of frustration. Enough? I never even liked you to begin with. I thought you could bring in some money, but I don't need a jobless, penniless man. At last, Alice showed her true colors. Perhaps that was her true feelings. She shouted and left the house. Was Brad really okay with this? I noticed Brad shaking when I turned around. Is he crying? Just as I was about to reach out to comfort him. <laughs> My son suddenly burst out laughing. Was he broken from the shock? It was a lie. Huh? A lie? The company's not bankrupt. Business is doing well. I just came back to pick up something I forgot. Turns out the bankruptcy was a lie. In reality, my son had come home during his lunch break to pick up something he had forgotten. He saw the three of us there together and listened to our conversation. My son, suspicious of Alice, who kept insisting on money, had set a trap for her. I'd heard that when a lover becomes jobless and penniless, their true nature shows. I wanted to test it. And the result was damning, to say the least. Don't you love her? I asked. My son looked a little sad. I loved her enough to want to marry her, but you can fall out of love in an instant. Maybe in that sense, I didn't love Alice all that much either. In that case, it might have been for the best that the engagement was called off. I exchanged a look with my mother-in-law and we both found ourselves laughing. 
As for what happened after, it seems the cafe where Alice was working part-time went out of business. Apparently the manager, who was Alice's affair partner, had to give up the cafe to pay for the alimony following a messy divorce. This was information from another regular customer at the cafe, as told by Brad. As for Alice, she had no means to pay the alimony herself and had to ask her parents. They were furious with her and kicked her out of the house. She's living in a rundown apartment, working a night job. That's what we heard from her parents. A few years later, by the time my two younger sons had started working, Brad was getting married. His partner is a very nice woman. Thank you for raising Brad into a wonderful man. I'm not much, but I'm looking forward to getting to know you two better. Even knowing the truth, she thanked us like that, and both my husband and I were moved to tears. Seeing us like that, Brad gave a big smile. Congratulations, Brad. I'm sure your parents in heaven are also happy. When I said that, my wonderful son smiled softly and said, Yes, but I'm happy if my parents in front of me are also happy. At his words, I found myself crying again. Oh dear, here come the tears again. You're crying too much. You've aged and gotten so tearful. When my husband said that, I told him he wasn't going to be having beer tonight. Her looks aren't too bad, I guess. She's not a beauty queen, but she doesn't fade into the background either. When I first visited my boyfriend Kevin's house for a family meeting, his mom, Emily, didn't waste any time critiquing my appearance. We had barely said hello. This was my first time meeting Kevin's parents. My name is Mia. Though we'd only been dating for six months, Kevin, who's 33, is two years older than me. I'm 31. So we're both at an age where marriage wouldn't be out of the question. I had naturally begun to think about marrying Kevin, and three months into our relationship, I introduced him to my mom, but I hadn't met his family yet. That's why I started to worry that maybe he was just toying with me. Kevin graduated from a top-tier university and is a high achiever at work. On the other hand, I'm just your average office worker. Kevin was the one who made the first move. He said he fell for me the moment he saw me during a meeting at my office. He gave me his business card and really went out of his way to win me over. Once we started dating, I found out that Kevin is both thoughtful and kind. But he's not a pushover. He's a genuine sportsman and really good looking. He has a lot of friends and is quite popular with the ladies. Why hadn't such an awesome guy dated anyone before? He could have easily been married to a beautiful woman by now. Curious, I asked Kevin why that was. Apparently, his overly doting mom was the reason. It seems that Emily, Kevin's mother, has been consistently hostile toward all his previous girlfriends. So Kevin told me, My mom is just nuts, okay? And he's been reluctant to introduce me. I love you, Mia, and I want to marry you right away. But it's obvious she'll oppose it. She might even verbally abuse you to break us up. Is she really that bad? But you shouldn't call your own mom that woman, you know? When I gently cautioned him, Kevin shook his head. It's not for my sake, but hers. She's not happy unless she's number one. She believes she's always right and that everyone else should just fall in line. I've come to think of her as a different species. I couldn't believe that Kevin could feel so strongly against his mom. Doesn't your dad say anything? In my family, it was just my mom and me. My dad died of an illness when I was young, so I really don't know what it's like to have a dad. But I wondered why Kevin's dad would allow someone his son described as nuts to act this way. <sighs> Kevin sighed. Dad has just given up. He says she used to be reasonable when they first got married, but became more self-centered over time. Now he's just happy if she doesn't interfere with his work. Oh, I see. I replied, but I still couldn't fully believe it. 
Based on my own mom, I thought that toxic parents like this were only in movies or shows. But the moment I met her, I felt what Kevin described as completely insane. Emily's sudden outburst left me speechless for a moment. Immediately, Kevin said, Mom, that's rude, in anger. Andrew, Kevin's dad, also gave Emily a stern look and said, Cut it out. But Emily didn't care. What's the big deal? I'm just speaking my mind. Even though she claimed to be complimenting me, it clearly seemed malicious. Andrew just sighed and kept quiet. Kevin angrily retorted, That's not a compliment. You're just trying to pick a fight. Emily laughed mockingly. <laughs> After all, Mia, you come from a single-parent home, right? You're not suitable for marriage with Kevin. More hurtful words followed. The first family meeting went like this from start to finish. I felt more drained than I had imagined. On the way home, when Kevin offered to drop me off, another argument broke out. Emily threw her hands up in exasperation. Why do I have to drive Mia home when Kevin is already back? Mia, you need to speak up and say you don't need a ride. Just go home by yourself. Mom, I said I want to take Mia home, so why are you blaming her? Are you losing it? Kevin fired back, clearly frustrated. You see, Kevin is usually a calm guy. It was the first time I had seen him angry all day, and I was beginning to think he had a point about his mom being totally crazy. No wonder Kevin didn't want to introduce us. If this is what the first meeting is like, what's next? I started to feel anxious. I love Kevin, but I had zero confidence that I could get along with Emily. Sorry about that. My mom's behavior is just embarrassing. Kevin apologized as we drove home. It's okay. Your mom sure has a unique way of seeing things. I responded cautiously. Tell me about it. First she opposed our marriage, and now she says if we're getting married, it better be a big ceremony. <sighs> Kevin sighed. In fact, just before at Kevin's house, his dad Andrew had asked, What are you planning for the wedding? Kevin and I are both in our 30s. Andrew seemed to think this meeting was for discussing wedding plans. In light of Kevin feeling embarrassed about his over-the-top mom, I proposed, Maybe we can skip the wedding ceremony altogether. How about just taking some photos with both our families? As a last-ditch effort, I added, Given the times, having a big ceremony might be risky. Kevin quickly agreed. Right. These days, many people opt for smaller, family-only weddings. Times have changed. Andrew chimed in. If Mia is okay with it, then so am I. Kevin seemed on board with the idea. Just when it looked like my suggestion would go through, Emily, for some reason, was adamantly against it. No way! Are you trying to tarnish our family's reputation? You can't skip important life rituals. Both of you lack common sense. She shouted, glaring at me. Emily was relentless. Marriage involves two families, not just the couple. A wedding ceremony is a way to gain approval from extended family and friends. It's a requirement for your marriage to be recognized. Despite our reservations, we ended up planning a grand wedding, driven by Emily's family honor and reputation arguments. Now the guest list included not just close family, but also Kevin and Andrew's colleagues, business contacts, and distant relatives. But here's the thing. My family isn't that big. We never planned to invite distant relatives, so there was a notable difference in the guest count between the grooms and the bride's sides. Looking at the guest list, Emily smirked. Oh, Mia's family is small, and it doesn't seem like you have anyone significant in terms of career. Clearly, she just wanted to make me feel inferior. The big day finally arrived. Almost everyone we invited showed up, and the wedding ceremony began smoothly, without a hitch. Between the performances of friends and a heartfelt speech from a mentor, the vibe was electric. I alternated between chatting with friends and colleagues and keeping an eye on Emily's actions. Emily was busy pouring drinks for various guests, 
passionately engaged in conversation. I couldn't hear exactly what she was saying, but her smug expression and the subtle reactions of her listeners gave me a pretty good idea. Probably bragging about Kevin and badmouthing me. What caught my attention was that people were also pouring drinks for Emily in return. She'd empty her glass and move to the next table, her face red and her steps unsteady. Kevin and I, while not saying anything, watched her nervously. I looked around for Andrew and found him oblivious, caught up in high spirits with his boss and colleagues. I was hoping everything would end smoothly, but the drama unfolded at the very end of the ceremony. During the letter segment from the bride to the parents, I expressed my gratitude towards my late dad and the mom who raised me. Mom was holding dad's portrait close, already tearing up as she listened to my words. I really can't thank you enough, Mom, for raising me as a single mom after Dad passed away. I remembered times when I was sad that Dad couldn't attend school sports events and how I cried when I got teased for not having a dad. During my teenage years, I was defiant and stopped talking to Mom. I regretted not being more filial and cherishing our time together. I broke down halfway through reading, tears smudging my makeup. I was so emotional, I even got hiccups, but I managed to finish my speech. Sniffles and choked up voices filled the room as people were touched by my words. A tipsy uncle from the family shouted, Go me ya! Warming the atmosphere. Yet only Emily, who was clearly intoxicated, wore a scowl on her face. The host announced, Next, we have gifts for the mom of both families. And Kevin and I handed a large bouquet of flowers to each of our moms. The staff turned the microphone to my mom, who said, Thank you so much. You've grown into such a wonderful person. I'm so happy. She then thanked everyone in the room. I appreciate everyone who's been watching over Mia with us and for being here today. Just as the staff directed the mic toward Emily, she snatched it. Everyone was shocked. Emily bluntly said, Mia's mom spoke nicely, but let's be clear. You didn't raise her alone. You got help from men, didn't you? I'm not thrilled to take in the daughter of such a lowly single mother, but I guess we can reform her. The room went dead silent. Emily, pleased with herself, concluded, I'm quite forgiving. Even I, Kevin, and Andrew couldn't stop her in time. Kevin was speechless. Andrew's face went from happily tipsy to bright red with his mouth hanging open. I couldn't let it slide when she spoke about Mom. I glared at Emily and said, No, you don't need to be forgiving. I didn't have a mic, but my words carried in the quiet room. Is it that bad if Dad isn't around? Everyone has a limited time sooner or later. You can't control that, can you? You say Emily is poor and she's from a single mother family? That people who are rich with both parents do bad things too. We've lived our lives honorably without any shame. We don't need your acceptance. Emily turned to the crowd and said, See, this is what I mean. Everyone, do you get it? Daughters of single mothers have tough personalities. It's really troublesome to have to re-educate them. Andrew yelled, Why would you say something like that now? Are you stupid? What the heck is that? That's terrible. One of my friends ignited the conversation, and the rest of the guests started murmuring, What's wrong with her? I feel sorry for Mia. Doesn't she feel embarrassed? Emily seemed surprised by the reaction from the crowd. It wasn't what she expected. Slowly, her face showed signs of confusion. But even with icy glares from others, Emily didn't back down. I said it for the sake of our family's honor, Emily insisted. Kevin sharply interjects. Don't lie about doing it for the family, Mom. You're just looking out for yourself. Neither Dad, Mia, nor I ever cared if Mia had a father or not. Andrew joins in. Not having a father isn't a child's fault. It's not Mia's fault even in normal families with both parents. 
There are messed up people like you. He glares at Emily. Stunned by the intensity from both Andrew and Kevin, Emily hesitates but tries to justify herself. But surely a daughter without a father can't turn out well. I can't bear to think of sweet Kevin struggling because of it. Andrew loses it. That's it. We're getting a divorce. Are you kidding me? Aren't you embarrassed by how senseless and drunk you are? Our company's CEO and clients are here. Even Kevin's boss. Are you trying to ruin our careers? Emily is blindsided by Andrew's call for a divorce. Sorry. So sorry. She immediately apologizes deeply. I'll get along with Mia and her mom from now on. Andrew, please, no divorce. Mia, say something. I reject her. No way. You've looked down on not just me, but also my mom. Why would we suddenly support you now? Kevin adds coldly. Exactly. There's no going back after causing such a scene. What's lost is lost. My mom, who has been watching all along, sighs. <sighs> She tenderly touches a picture of my late dad on the table. My husband would have wanted to be here. He would have hated to hear Mia called a child without a father. He'd want to be at his beautiful daughter's wedding, wouldn't he? Family isn't a given. It's a blessing. Kevin's mom? You've destroyed that yourself. I hug my mom, and Kevin stands beside me. Facing the crowd, Kevin declares... It's clear who's the more respectable mom. My family is Mia, and the woman who raised her to be who she is. He looks at Emily. Mom, thanks for raising me, but don't disappoint me anymore. Emily is stunned, frozen in place. Applause and warm cheers fill the room. Don't let a toxic parent bring you down. From the crowd's reaction, Emily seems to realize she's beyond redemption. When you act like a decent human being, you don't ruin your son's wedding, Emily. I said softly, unable to hold back any longer. Emily burst into loud sobs. <laughs> After that, the wedding became legendary in its own way. The story spread from the guests to my workplace, making me a bit embarrassed for a while. However, most people just laughed at Emily's ridiculous behavior and sympathized with me. Andrew quickly hired a lawyer and filed for divorce from Emily. Due to her daily imprudent behavior and excessive spending, he managed to significantly reduce her share of the assets. Emily was kicked out of the house and appears to be living a miserable life in an old apartment. I later found out that the so-called prestigious family background was only on Kevin's father's side. Emily was actually from an ordinary, middle-class family. She was just exploiting other people's success and power. She even had to pay us in full for the damages and emotional stress she caused at the wedding. Despite that wedding disaster, Kevin and I are doing well. He stood up for me and I fell even more in love with him. Emily, who used to trouble Kevin, is gone. Now Kevin and I are looking forward to building a happy home together. Oh, I've had enough. I was at my wit's end, standing in front of my husband and in-laws. It was a day we were supposed to go on a trip to Hawaii, and my mother-in-law had just told me, I don't remember inviting you. Carter, my husband, just gave me a look that said he wanted to get through this awkward moment as quickly as possible, offering no help. I was done with these people. My name is Rita Rollins. I'm 28 years old. Before getting married, I worked as a bartender. I've always loved drinks, and right after graduating from college, I got a job at a privately owned bar. That's where I met Carter who had been a regular there even before I started working. I heard from the owner that he was a quiet guy, but he started talking to me more after my second shift. We were the same age, hit it off, and eventually our relationship turned romantic. We got married six months ago. Until I married Carter, 
I had never moved out of my parents' home. There were two reasons for that. First, my workplace was very close to my home. Second, my dad was extremely protective of me. I lost my mom to illness, and being an only child, I was always the apple of my dad's eye. But he didn't just spoil me. He knew when to be strict. My dad is a wealthy businessman, so I've never had to worry about money. I was able to go to college thanks to his financial support. I don't know all the details, but he seems to be involved in managing several companies. He cried so much at my wedding that the staff had to caution him. But he trusted Carter and sent me off as a bride. So I finally moved out and started my life with Carter. But reality was different from what I had dreamed. It all started when my mother-in-law began visiting our home. After marrying Carter, I quit my job and became a homemaker. Carter works as a driver for a small transportation company. He leaves early in the morning and comes home late at night, so I had a lot of free time. That's when my mother-in-law started to meddle in my life. One day, after seeing Carter off and doing some laundry, the doorbell rang. I checked the monitor and saw it was her. Hello? Oh, has Carter gone to work? Yes, he just left. I brought these cupcakes that Carter loves. Could you give them to him? Thanks for your kindness. We'll enjoy them later. I thought my response was perfectly polite, but she suddenly frowned and said, What are you talking about? There's none for you. I made these for Carter. Her words were so cold and pointed that they hurt me a bit. Seeing me look down, she said, Don't be so sensitive. Just let me in already. And pushed past me into the house. Leaving me stunned, she headed straight for the living room. I hurriedly followed her. By the way, there's something I want to talk to you about. As soon as she sat on the sofa, she said it. I had no idea what she was talking about, so I just waited for her to continue. When am I going to see my first grandchild? What? We don't have plans for that anytime soon. What do you mean, no plans? You're worthless as a wife, then. My mother-in-law's unexpected visit was filled with nothing but derogatory comments towards me. Carter and I had decided to wait until we were 30 to have kids. We're not financially stable yet, and we don't want to bring a child into a world where they'd struggle. But my mother-in-law dismissed our plans, saying I had no value. Isn't that our choice to make? She didn't expect me to talk back. She furrowed her brows and yelled, How dare you defy me, a wife who can't even give me grandchildren! I never said I can't have children. I said the timing isn't right. A woman who can't give birth, when I want her to, is as worthless as one who can't give birth at all. I felt irritated by her words and fired back, but she didn't stop. Enough! This is pointless! With that, she left. That night, Carter looked at me apologetically and said, Hey, Rita. We should have a kid. Did your mom say something to you? I immediately suspected that the events of the day had something to do with this impressed Carter. But he remained silent, looking down. Tell me the truth. Your mom said something, didn't she? Well, it's both. Dad yelled at me to get you pregnant already. Probably mom's idea. Dad has always been under Mom's thumb. I felt my spirits sink. Carter is kind to me, but he lacks assertiveness. I knew he wasn't confrontational, but he never complains even when things are against him. Now I was sure. It's not that he won't say anything. He can't. I'm going to your parents' house tomorrow. 
our home and my in-laws are just a 20-minute drive apart. I could go there any time. But what if we just have a kid like they want? Wouldn't that calm them down? I was infuriated by Carter's weak response. Do you really want to have a child now? Have you forgotten that we agreed to wait until we save some money? Well, can't we just ask your dad for money? He's really wealthy, right? <sighs> I sighed deeply and stopped preparing dinner. Then I looked at Carter and said, don't you find that embarrassing? If we have a child, we're the parents. How do you plan to raise a child when we can't even manage our own finances? When I said this assertively, Carter deflated and mumbled, Sorry, ending the conversation. I've always been strong-willed, even handling customer complaints when I was a bartender. Carter, despite being an athlete, is weak-willed. He may look muscular and strong, but he has a fragile heart, a disappointing balance. The next day, as promised, I visited my in-laws. The person who opened the door was my mother-in-law. Oh, what brings you here all of a sudden? It's rare for you to visit. Come in. She treated me with unexpected courtesy. Walking into the living room, I saw my father-in-law scrutinizing a pile of brochures on the table. Mother-in-law, about yesterday. It's about having kids. I'd like to get straight to the point, so I tried to steer the conversation that way. But father-in-law interrupted me. Rita, if we go on vacation for Christmas, would you prefer Hawaii or Florida? I was speechless, not understanding the sudden change in topic. Father-in-law's tone hardened. Can't you even answer a simple question? My dear, it's okay. Rita is a worthless person after all. Father-in-law yelled, and mother-in-law made a condescending comment. I felt my anger rising. But I decided to hold back, not wanting to stoop to their level. I'd choose Hawaii. Crossing the ocean makes it feel more like a vacation. All right, let's go with Hawaii then. By the way, why Hawaii? We got a bonus, and we want to go to a seaside destination with Carter. I couldn't reconcile this with father-in-law, with the man who had been pressuring me to have children through Carter. I had assumed it would be a trip for just mother-in-law and father-in-law, but apparently I was wrong. But I would realize my mistake much later. Father-in-law seemed in high spirits now that the vacation spot was decided. I lost the urge to bring up yesterday's issues and ruin his mood, so I decided to leave quietly. But mother-in-law stopped me. What is it? I thought you should have this. She handed me a folded letter-sized paper. When I opened it, it was filled with names. Frederick, Dylan, Jerry, Oliver, what is this? It's a list of names for our grandchild. Pick one when the baby is born. What? I couldn't help but shout. Yesterday, she was berating me for not having kids. And today she's handing me a list of names for a child we haven't even planned yet? And upon closer inspection, there were no names that seemed suitable for a girl. Um, do you plan to give me a list for girls, too? Mother-in-law looked at me as if I was absurd. What are you talking about? We only want a boy. We can't let the Rollins lineage die out. That list is based on the assumption you'll have a boy. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. What could I possibly say to that? Her way of thinking was so outlandish that I started to question my own sanity. For the first time in my life, I had met someone with such a different sense of common decency. Look, I have many questions, but let's stick to one due to time constraints. What if a girl is born? 
My voice trembled slightly with suppressed anger. I felt like lunging at mother-in-law right then and there. That's simple. We just won't acknowledge her as our grandchild. If a girl is born, still name her from this list. If you don't like that, then do your best to have a boy. Mother-in-law said this with a mocking smile. Meanwhile, father-in-law was engrossed in online shopping, probably looking for things to take to Hawaii. I caught a glimpse of swimsuit images on his screen. Suddenly, I felt a headache coming on and left my in-law's house. When I got home, I told Carter about today's events. He just hummed. Hmm. Not offering much in response. Shouldn't we focus on preparing for Hawaii first? When did they say we were going? You know, I started to speak but stopped myself. Arguing now wouldn't solve anything with Carter. It made more sense to prepare for the upcoming trip. We were leaving this weekend. During the Christmas break, and Carter also had time off from work. We don't have time to buy new stuff, come to think of it. We don't even have a suitcase. My dad has some. I'll borrow them tomorrow. My dad loves to travel and has several suitcases. Borrowing a couple wouldn't be a big deal. I contacted him on my phone and arranged to pick them up the next day. On the day of the trip, having successfully borrowed the suitcases, Carter and I headed to the meeting point mentioned in a message from mother-in-law to Carter. When we arrived, my in-laws were already there. Sorry to keep you waiting. I apologized as soon as we got there. But my in-laws looked at me strangely. Honey, did you invite Rita? No. What's going on with the both of you? Like Carter, I was clueless about what was happening. Then mother-in-law said with a feigned, innocent expression, We don't remember inviting Rita. Time seemed to freeze for Carter and me. What do you mean? You said with Carter, didn't you? <laughs> mother-in-law laughed loudly. That meant with our parents, too. This isn't the only meeting point. You can't be serious. Of course, we wouldn't invite a useless daughter-in-law. Carter, here's your ticket. Mother-in-law handed the plane ticket to Carter right in front of me. I felt a chilling humiliation, as if I'd been deliberately excluded. It was a huge insult. They must have intentionally misled me as evidence by their creepy smiles. When I glanced at Carter, he just looked down, avoiding eye contact. So he won't even help me now. At that moment, I lost all interest in dealing with these people, including Carter. Even if I had gone on the trip, it would never have been a meaningful experience. Fine, whatever. I said, dragging my suitcase filled with pointless hopes and excitement away from the scene. I returned home, unpacked the suitcases, and headed straight to my parents' house. I thought I'd tell them what happened today while returning the unused suitcases. When I arrived, my overprotective dad greeted me with a hug. I found his boyfriend-like hugs a bit annoying, but I was also grateful for his affection. Did you enjoy your trip to Hawaii? He asked with sparkling eyes. He probably wished he could have gone with me, but I shattered that expectation. I didn't go because I'm the daughter-in-law. Confused, my dad asked, What do you mean? As to answer his question, I recounted everything that had happened up to today. That's terrible, especially on Carter's part. A husband's job is to protect his wife, even if the opponents are his own parents. I had to stand up to my in-laws, who opposed our marriage, and that's how I got to marry your mom. My dad said, He's a cheerful guy, 
who mixes humor into his conversations, making them enjoyable. But his eyes weren't laughing this time. Is Carter's dad's name Fred Rollins? And he works at New Wave Corporation, right? I didn't know why he was asking, but I nodded because he was correct. Just leave the rest to Daddy, he said with a smile, ending the conversation. The day Carter and his parents were supposed to return from Hawaii arrived. I was summoned by my dad, and we headed to the airport together. We waited in the arrival lobby for Carter and his parents. Thirty minutes later, they emerged, talking and laughing. My dad immediately approached the trio. I hurriedly followed. Carter was the first to notice my dad. He stopped dead in his tracks, looking as if he'd seen a ghost. His parents noticed his reaction. Just as mother-in-law asked Carter, What's wrong? My dad spoke up. Hello, I'm Rita's father. The three reacted nervously to his words. Uh, hello. Father-in-law responded with his tone much weaker than when he had spoken to me. Do you know why I'm here? The aura my dad emitted was intense. He's built a massive fortune over the years and knows how to control the conversation. The three seemed to know what this was about. They looked down, trying to avoid the issue. My dad took a step closer and said, I heard my daughter was excluded from the Hawaii trip. Is that correct? Um, well... Carter, didn't I tell you to take good care of my daughter when you asked for her hand in marriage? You've betrayed that trust, haven't you? Carter glanced at my dad's face for a moment, then quickly looked away, mumbling, I'm sorry. But my dad didn't let that go. Apologizing means you've done something wrong, doesn't it, Mr. Rollins? Uh... Both Carter and mother-in-law were at a loss for words. Though the airport was bustling, our corner felt like a different world. Thanks to my dad steering us to a less crowded area, no one was paying us much attention. Mr. Rollins, let me make one thing clear. If you don't honestly tell me what happened, I won't forgive you. On the defensive, Carter and his parents finally had father-in-law speak up, perhaps to save face. What do you mean, won't forgive? What are you planning to do? I'll shut down your workplace. Ha ha, what a joke! <laughs> father-in-law started laughing but trailed off as he met my dad's serious gaze. You work at New Wave Corporation, right? The bank recently approached me about providing funding and management reforms for New Wave. If I decide it's not worth saving, the bank wants to pull its funding before the debt grows any further. I was considering helping out, given that it's the company where my daughter's father-in-law works, but it seems like it's not worth it after all. For the first time, father-in-law's eyes, which had been locked down on me, began to twitch. You can't mix personal matters with business. You'll lead not just me, but the other employees out on the street. Father-in-law's face turned pale. But my dad was relentless. I don't mind. It's a company that is bound to fail sooner or later. Besides, my daughter is more important than employees losing their jobs. I really wanted Carter to take on this role. But it seems I misjudged him. Sorry, Rita. My intuition failed me this time. Carter looked miserable, unable to argue against the accusations. From my perspective, I felt more secure with someone like my dad who truly cared about me. Come on, both of you. Stand up for yourselves. Say something, darlings. You too, Carter. Mother-in-law was panicking, but my dad didn't let her off the hook either. Mrs. Rollins, you're also part of the problem, aren't you? Why are you trying to force Rita to have a child against her will? Let's hear your excuse. My dad glared at mother-in-law with a low, stern voice. Mother-in-law flinched, unable to respond. Have a boy? Choose a name from this list? She's worthless? Who do you think you are? Um, well... Mother-in-law was increasingly cornered by my dad. 
sweat forming on her forehead. But my dad didn't stop. If you're going to make arbitrary decisions, then so will we. First, we'll have Rita separate from Carter. What? Carter looked up shocked. The discussion with my daughter is already done. The divorce papers are filled out. Without Rita, you won't even have the chance for grandchildren. We were looking forward to seeing our grandchildren. I don't care. I won't sacrifice my daughter for your selfish desires. Even I, as her father, don't interfere in her life. You have no right to. The three of them were flustered, and no one spoke. You'll pay the price for trying to control Rita's life. Please, I love Rita. Forgive us. At the very end, Carter pleaded with my dad. But my dad merely glanced at him. That's not for me to decide. When my dad's gaze turned to me, I clearly said, Please don't include me in your lives anymore. Goodbye. Rejecting Carter's plea. Carter groaned. Oh! And mother-in-law started to cry, possibly out of shock. Father-in-law just stood there stunned. A week later, the divorce was finalized through a lawyer. My dad knows a lot of people, many of whom are lawyers or accountants, people who know the law. Thanks to one of my dad's contacts handling the divorce, I was able to receive compensation for the harassment I endured from my in-laws. My dad then told the bank that father-in-law's company wasn't worth saving. Heeding my dad's advice, the bank abandoned New Wave Corporation, which went bankrupt a month later. My dad also took action against Carter. He asked a police officer he knew to investigate my husband's company on some pretext. Turns out, small companies often engage in illegal activities, and the CEO was caught evading taxes. That company also went bankrupt due to the CEO's arrest. Mother-in-law was a homemaker, so my dad didn't do anything to her, but she's probably panicking since her husband and son both lost their jobs. I can picture her frantic state. When I happened to see mother-in-law in town, she looked frail and on the verge of collapsing. This whole experience made me realize the huge gap between the ideal and reality in married life. I was harassed by my in-laws and got no help from the husband, who should have been my main support. Yet the reason I'd consider marrying again is to give back to my loving father by letting him see his grandchildren. For now, I'm on my own. But someday, I hope to meet someone truly wonderful 